Hi everyone. So, I've had a lot of questions about how to build these sorts of panels here, uh, suitable for No Limits 2 and uh, Ride Sims. And I just keep answering, I, in my opinion, the same questions over and over again uh, in the YouTube comments section on a few of my videos, even when the videos don't relate to anything to do with the matter. So, I'm just going to be doing a tutorial today, from scratch, start to end, on how to build a panel. Um, with all the programming, I'll do a programming tutorial because I've yet to find a decent one. There is one on my channel, but it's not really too good. It's, uh, quality's pretty poor and I didn't really explain things through thoroughly, in my opinion. So I'll be doing this. So first things first, what you want is a junction box like this. So this is just one I've, uh, ordered. I got it off eBay for about, I'd say, £10. Um, I'll put the conversion rate on the screen for that in dollars and a few other currencies. Uh, they, obviously those um, exchange rates will change over time, so take them with a pinch of salt. But yeah, it's basic PVC. Um, you get all the measurements up and everything. This, about this sort of depth, that's about 90 millimeters there, I'd say. That's plenty enough for the buttons to be sitting in. And you just want one of these. Um, this is all you need. Pretty basic. You can go for a metal enclosure. Um, and also some enclosures, they are pre-drilled, so you don't need to drill the holes yourself. But I just find those quite pricey and not really worth it. You can save yourself quite a few quid if you just drill the holes yourself, and providing you have the right tools and safety equipment, you can do it. So, and the metal ones, you know, they, they cost hundreds. So, in my opinion, they're not really worth it. Most people are quite happy with just these plastic ones. Um, this panel will be for sale for anyone who wants to buy it. Um, I've got it reserved for someone right now. But, um, you know, it's if they don't want it, then it'll be up for sale for about £100 or so, maybe 120 depending on how long it takes. So, um, yeah, this is what you want. Junction box, you can get them off eBay, basic PVC. You want to search up for junction box or IP66 enclosure. These are waterproof. They have a seal there on the inside, which goes around. These ones are waterproof. They don't need to be. They're not going to be anywhere near water, but... It's a nice little feature. So uh, yeah, on to the next point. Next, what you need are the correct tools to, um, you know, actually drill the holes. This is a little punch hole um, maker, and it's 22 millimeters. You can see on the side there. I ordered this one from AliExpress. It's all right. It's pretty cheap. It's about six pounds. Um, it's just got a basic washer there, and uh, the more expensive ones they have like a like a bearing by there, so it's a bit easier to use, but this is absolutely good enough. You don't need anything fancier than this. Um, and so how it works is, you want to get one that's 22 millimeters. Uh, 22 millimeters is the button size I use. It's not super realistic, but it's ideal for people um, who just want a panel uh, to use at home, because although the 30 millimeter ones are more realistic, they come at a bit of a cost, and they take up way more room, and they're just not very practical for using on a desk, so I always use 22mm, I just think they're the best in my opinion. This is how it works. Um, this, the uh, the diameter of this little part of the bottom here is 22mm, I'll just unscrew it off here. So, what you do is you drill a pilot hole first, and uh, this one in this case for the bolt would be 9mm, so you drill a 9mm hole where you want your button. And then you thread this through, like that, and you can see there's a little end there for it to go through. This screws on on the bottom, and you can see it's got little teeth on there, and get it to focus. Apologies for the dog hair on it, but it has these little teeth, and uh, basically this screws on. So I'll just screw that on as a demo. Apologies for this, I am doing it with one hand. I will try my best. And I will be splitting this series up into parts, by the way. I just think um, to do it in one big long video, when someone might just want the programming part, or just the fabrication part, or just the wiring part, it's probably a bit easier. So what you do is you thread this through on the other side of this panel, so it'll be a bit like that, but just in a hole. And then what you do is you tighten that bolt, and as you tighten this, um, it basically pushes that through. So this pushes the teeth through, and it'll make a perfect 22 millimeter hole. Um, that's what you want. That's ideal um, for the button size. You want to check your button size. If you want the 30 mils, get a 30 mil um, piece punch, I think they're called. 30 mils. I'm using 22 millimeter buttons in here, so I'm going to be using that. Um, speaking of buttons, you're going to need something to actually, you know, 
put in your panel. So I've got these buttons here, they're very inexpensive Chinese ones, just as a little bit of a demo for this panel, but they're, they're, they're very good quality. I mean, they're nice. You can see the little contact blocks moving in there, so as you push that down, it makes contact with the top plate and allows electricity to go through. That's normally open there, that's normally closed. I'll explain that a bit later if you don't know what that means, but you should get the hang of it pretty quickly. Um, so I've got these buttons, I've got this one here, um, and I'm using illuminated buttons here, so I'll show you how to write illuminated panels. Um, it's easier if the panel is not illuminated, because there's less wiring to do, there's less space you need in the panel, so you can make it a bit more compact. And uh, the programming is going to save, you're going to do about half the programming if it's not illuminated. So yeah, I've got these little illuminated buttons that are just momentary. So I've got a blue one. I've got a dual dispatch, I've got this yellow one for floors, this one's for like a flying coaster. Um, I've got two of these switches, that'll be for the gates and restraints. I've got this little key panel enable switch, so you put a key in and you can turn it on and off. This will be the main panel power switch. And I've got this e-stop button, which I'm not too pleased with, I think it's a bit small um, in reality to a real e-stop button. But this one just presses down, and then it locks there until you twist it, and then it goes back up. and. Uh, either closes or opens the circuit, depending on which contact block you use. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to rearrange this onto the panel and just give you a bit of a demo as to, well, what it, what it will look like. So, uh, let's move on to that. Okay, so I've marked out the uh, positions of where I want everything to be on the panel, and I've just put the buttons on top just to give you a rough idea of the layout. So we've got dual dispatch here, both illuminated gates, restraints, floors for flawless coasters, a uh, flying car button there in the blue, or I could also use it as a reset button for the e-stop, but right now it's for flying cars because I want it to be used on every ghost that you possibly can on No Limits 2. Uh, the e-stop button's going to be there, and the power switch is going to be there. It's going to look like that. How you mark these out, you want to make sure that they're even, right? This is really key. So once you drill these holes, oops, sorry. Once you drill these holes, there's no going back. So you can see I've just got a compass there and got the midpoint of each side, drawn a line through it, and then I've just measured each side. And just for the ruler, marked it out so where each cross is on each side like that, there's going to be a button. And we're going to do it by, a, by that system there. And uh, so, yeah, to drill, I'm going to be using this 9mm drill bit because it's, um, you know, the, the actual bolt on the little die piece here, which needs to go through to cut the main hole, is 9 mils. So, uh, this is 9 mils. I am aware that this is for carpentry. Um, it's not designed for PVC, but um, I don't really care, so sorry if I do piss off any carpenters in the comments, but uh, that is the drill bit I'm going to be using for today. So, uh, yeah, I'll get drilling the holes, and I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so the holes are drilled. Uh, nine millimeters. A few of them are a bit wonky, but honestly, you're not going to really notice that too much. Um, they're better than my other one, way better than my other one, which I uh, sort of messed up. But yeah, these are fine. So now what I'll do is I'll just uh, demonstrate threading through the actual piece punch and how it works, essentially. Okay, so I thread it through. The bolt and the main cap and the washer goes on top. This little screw back goes on the bottom. And then you want to just screw that up nice and tight. And you can see those teeth digging in down there. So as you tighten this with a spanner, if I can find said spanner, there we go. As you Tighten this with the spanner, round and round, the teeth lock, it pushes it through and it will make a perfect 22mm hole. So I'm going to do that for all these holes, it's going to take a bit of time, but uh, yeah, be right back. And we are done. There you go. Perfect 22mm holes. So uh, now I'm just going to fit the buttons in and uh, give you a bit of a demonstration of that. Okay, so with a lot of these buttons, you have the actual, you know, button on top, and then you have these contact blocks on the bottom. The panel sits around there where the edge of my fingernail is, so that's the top part, that's all underneath the panel. Now to release these, they have different mechanisms, but for these ones I got, you can just push that white bit in, and simply, sorry, very difficult to do with one hand, There we go, did it eventually. So that's the actual actuator there. That's the LED. And uh, yep, so you fit this on, 
So that goes in like so. And then this goes on underneath, it clips through, and you're done. So I'm just going to do that now. Let's uh, do this. You usually have like a ring here. So you just want to unscrew that. And then uh, screw it on underneath. There you go. Screwing this on. A lot of them are waterproof and they'll come with a little seal, which you can just about see there. So I'm just screwing this in until it mounts. And that's on. Okay. Then underneath this part you get this little ring. And you just screw that on. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. And then uh, you can get the little contact block and shut that on underneath. It usually fits in only one way, so you sort of need to just give it a spin and figure it out. There you go, it's in. I will tighten that with a pair of pliers, but that's it. So on the top of the panel, you have your button mounted. You can press that in, and then you have the little uh, terminal block on the bottom. Repeat those steps, and before you know it, that's what your panel's gonna look like. So, all buttons click in, V-stop works. Reset or flying coaster car, I haven't decided yet. Floors for flawless car. You have got the panel switch mounted. Uh, switches. They work just fine, nice and parallel as well. It's lovely. So. That's what your panel's gonna look like. Um, it's pretty much not gonna look any different than that. But uh, yep, so there's all the terminal blocks underneath. We're gonna be wiring up all of those. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fun, isn't it? It's quite tedious, the wiring, and it, it takes time. But, you know, you still need to do it to make it work. Um, that will be in the next video. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make this in different parts, you know, instead of just one big long video, so just in case you want to skip to a certain park, or a certain part rather. Um, I know a lot of people were just concerned about the programming, and not necessarily about anything else. Uh, so you can, yeah, go ahead and do that. So, anyways, thank you very much for watching, uh, I hope to see you all soon. Uh, Ta-ta!